Hi everyone, I am Mariev and I am the Director of Customer Success at Toonboom. In this tutorial, we're going to look at bringing elements together in a scene, mainly the blending modes. So we're going to create a very nice warm lit up ambiance in the scene with some depth and blurs and some glowing elements. And so we're going to see how we bring all these elements together. The first thing we're going to look at right now is a review on using some blurs because we want to create some depth of field in the scene. And so there's different ways of doing it, but obviously the most common way of doing that is using blurs on different elements and applying different level of radius. This scene actually has a multiplane setup. So if I was to rotate that using control shift or command shift, you can see that this scene has an actual multiplane. So you could use the focus node so that it automatically applies the right depth of field, but sometimes we want to cheat it, have some stronger blurs on different elements and so on. So we're going to look at the most standard way of doing it, which is applying some blurs. And so you could use the different blurs that you saw previously, Gaussian blur, blur box, or here we have our blur radial, which is a very standard blur to use. And you can bring them in your scene to uh, to apply on your elements. I'm going to cut this one and we're going to go inside the background group. So if you go in this group here, you'll be able to see that we have our different elements in our scene that are on different layers. We're going to start with the back bushes here. So I'm going to paste that back in here. So I have my blur again using the Alt key. I'm going to slide this blur on my element. Now remember, anything that is blurriness or long effects to calculate, you will need to move on to the render view to be able to see these elements. And in render view, you're not able to play back because there's calculation time to do. So you can either use a render preview node to see your elements animated in OpenGL, or you can use the playback toolbar and do a render and play, which will do a quick render of your elements. But right now we're just going to use a still frame in the render view to see our effects. So I'm going to open the editor of that blur node and increase the radius to about four or five. And so I'm going to blur these back elements there. You can see as you start blurring elements, other elements start to pop out a bit more. I'm going to bring in another blur and also blur my temple. But as it's not as far as the bushes or the forest in the back, I will blur it a bit less, maybe closer to three. And so a bit less, I could maybe decrease that a little bit to 2.5. You'll need to adjust it based obviously on what you have to create. And then I can also blur this tree. I can blur the ground. So you can decide to blur whatever you need. I'll do a slight blur on this tree here, which is this element here. I'll bring in the blur and I'll give it a slight blur as well. Maybe closer to 1.5. Depends, maybe a bit more. Just a, just a slight blur. And then I could do a gradient blur on the floor as well. So it depends again, what type of effect you want to create. And this one is pretty strong in the foreground. So I will probably also want to blur it, but I'll blur it more since it's closer to us. So you see these two elements are together. So you could go ahead and apply a mask or separate the two elements or blur it less depending on what you need to do. I'll give it a slight blur and I may even cheat actually and grab this tree and lower it so that the base of this tree doesn't show up too much. There you go. And so you can decide how you want to blur these elements in the scene. So the next thing we're going to do is to bring in, if we move forward in our scene, we have that little light bug and I'll show that in OpenGL. We have some sunbeams coming in and we have a little bug going around. So before we play with the beams, we're going to play with that light bug here. And so the one thing we want to do on this one is apply a glow around this little uh, creature. So if we get out of our group, we're going to be able to go inside our light bug group and we're going to find here the elements for that character. On this one, we're going to apply a glow. If I connect the glow directly on the composite, 
it's going to turn the entire bug into a glow itself. And it's not what I'm looking for. I still want to have the bug itself visible. So I'm going to pull out a second cable so that I have the actual bug in front of the glow one. I could have the glow in front, but then it would be the glow on top of it, which is on this case, not what I'm looking for. But obviously the glow is kind of too small. Even if I was to increase the radius, I'll get a kind of a fine line around here, but I'd like to have it larger. And in order to do that, we're going to bring back on our very useful node, which is the mat resize. So the mat resize, I can bring that in. And if I connect it above the glow, I will be able to increase the size of the bug shape and have a bigger glow around it. So I could make it very big. See, obviously the bigger I go, the bigger the glow is. And then this is where I can start playing between the balance of the radius of the mat resize and the radius of the glow. So I blur it more and I can decrease a little bit the size of the character. So depending on the effect you need to do, then you will balance out these two parameters together. And so now I have a glow around my character. So it's always good to remember for a glow, pull out a second character, a second connection and use the mat resize to make this element bigger. Finally, we are going to look at our sun rays or sunbeams in here. We created these using the animated mats. So we have two drawings, which actually uh, originally are simple rectangle. And then on these, we applied the animated mat effect. So the, you can see that we have our inner contours, our inside contour that creates the gradient. And these ones are animated over time. So if I switch back to OpenGL, you can scroll through and see that they are animated over time. So you can play with these keyframes, change the timing. You can also select these keyframes and apply some ease in and ease out if you want them to start a bit slow and, and so on. So you can play with that timing and adjust everything you have there. I could make one shorter. So they are easy to adjust if you wanted to have them animated differently than what you have there. But the idea there is that when you send animated mat in, uh, in the render view, you will see the full effect with the gradient. But right now it's only a transparent yellowish color. What we want to do is use our blending nodes to blend these rays uh, better in the entire composition. So you may be familiar already with different blending nodes, what they do. Uh, you can find them in the node view by looking for blend. So blending. And as you import these, uh, this node, you'll see it's only one port. So you can easily connect it right below one of these mat generator. And if you go in the editor, you'll be able to set blending nodes, a uh, blending modes either for what you do and you see in soft render, or if you were to export an SWF, then you would use different blending, uh, blending modes because it's not the same that are supported when you export either a bitmap image sequence or QuickTime movie or exporting a vector SWF or flash movie. So right now we're going to look at the blending modes in the soft render. So if I go down in here, you have plenty of them that you can play with and see how they will blend in your, your scenes. And so the way it works is it will take the color of the pixel or each pixel in your, uh, in your mat, and it will see or look at the color of the pixel behind it. And it will take these two colors and either multiply their values, add their values, subtract their values, and it can go in a lot more complex algorithms to produce a certain effect. So if I was just to do add, it would add up the two values, which would bring uh, the colors a lot closer to white. Or if I was to subtract one value from the other, then it would get a lot darker towards uh, black. And so there's everything in between available in here. 
Often for a sun rays and beams, you may look at a screen or overlay effect. So if I was to look at, uh, let's see, I'm going to go down and get into a screen color. So it's fairly similar to the color I have already. I could do a vivid lights, which you can see here as it starts to blend the colors together. It was going to make some of the colors a lot stronger. It all depends which color overlaps with which color, maybe a hard light. So you're going to have to try a few different one overlay. Well, it's actually almost invisible with this color and divide. So you can see as you go, you will create different ambiance, a cold ambiance, a warm ambiance, exclusion. So you can see that's not very nice in this context. Maybe just the, the U or the color. So you can go around and choose uh, different blending options to get the, your sunbeams to mix in your scene better than just overlapping a half transparent color on top of it. And so now I have two sunbeams overlapping. So as they overlap with two blending modes, it's going to get stronger and stronger. And so you can use uh, all these different versions of it until you find the effect that you like. Over time, as you practice with them, you'll start to know, it's like, oh, I want to use a screen. I want to use multiply. You'll know what you'll want to use over time. And so as you combine all these elements together with effects, you'll be able to create very nice moods and ambiance in your scene and combines all these elements as they belong together.